see any of you either. Um, so I was thinking about the word free, and I think anymore when someone offers me something free, I kind of give them the Heisman, and I'm like, ah, no, I don't want it, because something's attached. And it really has become this, there's something more to the story. So really free to me comes back to my very early childhood. And the real free moment for me was Christmas morning because everything I was getting from Santa was free. It was something I definitely wanted and I didn't have to pay for it. Because I actually grew up one of six kids. So we actually really had that system of if you wanted something, you kind of had to try to earn money somehow and get it. So Christmas morning had this really great thing because we had lists, we had a system, you put it down, you usually got it, at least the top three things. So 1988, um, I got my list done and I had my things and I got my Little Mermaid soundtrack. Woo! <laughs> Pretty jazz. I also got a bike with white tires that make no sense. White tires, really? I don't know. Um, and I got the top of the class board game. Anyone else into that? No? All right, loser. So anyway, so I had my things and a big Christmas morning. There were five kids at this time. Um, you can imagine the chaos. Complete chaos. Like every Jewish friend I had came over just to see the chaos. Uh, there was no rhyme or reason to it. It was just like, get in there, presents, crazy, you look over, see if anything got anything better than you, and you're like, oh, shh. All right. So it's total chaos. And somehow the chaos simmers, and we are somehow wound up and shoved into our family wood paneled minivan you're jealous, um, where, he, and it was the minivans back in the day when they didn't have windows that went down and the middle seat was a shared bucket, it wasn't those nice cabinets they have now. Anyway, um, so we get piled into the minivan and before you get into the minivan you get to bring one thing where we're going and we're going to grandma's house where we'll probably get more free shit but we need to bring one thing because in case the things we get we don't want to play with we have one thing we can rely on. So it's a big moment because You've got to decide, and I'm like, ugh, soundtrack, ugh, board game, ugh, bike, none of these really work. So I grab something, who knows what it is. But the more important thing about it is my brother decides to bring his Nintendo. A Nintendo. You're going to bring your Nintendo. Are you really going to hook it up at Grandma and Grandma's house? No. But he brings his Nintendo. So we're in the minivan, and we're all like, you know, ha holding this prized free possession like it's gold. And we get there and, you know, get more presents. And now we're on our way back. So we can imagine how tired we are. We've been through two rounds of free shit. You've got five kids in the back of a minivan. Things are not good by any means. There's screaming. There's yelling. I'm about six. My brother's nine. There's another one that's seven. There's the four-year-old and the three-year-old that's strapped into this car seat. She's the safest one because she's at least confined. The rest of us are jumping around like crazy animals that have been uncaged. And the real trouble one is the four-year-old, Amy, who now has two kids, so she knows how bad she was. And Amy decides to take the Nintendo box and start pulling apart all the styrofoam. And this is driving Joe insane. Joe, who's the oldest of five girls, he doesn't have a brother. He has no one to help him. The, the bits and pieces, she's ripping apart the styrofoam. You'd think she was biting on the cords and destroying the Nintendo, but no, she's just ripping off the styrofoam. So my dad is commanding this minivan, turns around, and is like, all right, Joe, put it down. Amy, put it down. He's yelling, he's pointing, he's trying to drive, it's crazy. And finally, he pulls the minivan over. And we're like, oh, shit. We didn't say shit, but we said something like that in our minds. We're like, oh, no, it's bad. <coughs> Comes around to the sliding door, opens it up, pulls Joe out by the top of his jacket, grabs the Nintendo, throws him on the side of the road. <laughs> okay, doesn't throw. He just gracefully places him. But he brings him to the side of the road. Leaves him there gets back in the car, closes the door, 
and it's the most silent moment I've ever heard in my life. As five girls are like thinking, this is like the original Survivor, like, oh my God, Joe is out there, we're driving away. It's dead silent. Everyone's scared. We're scared we don't, we'll never see our brother again, who's gonna be the next to go. <laughs> we get home, keep the silence. Maybe 20 minutes later, they show up with Joe again. And I guess the moment we realize that really nothing's for free and uh, never destroy styrofoam surrounding a Nintendo. <laughs>